Hi everyone, this is Ryan from RockTheDivine.com. Thank you so much for tuning in to my latest video. Today's video is going to be a little different. I thought I would do something strictly fun instead of my normal educational videos about the divine. So today I thought I would tell you a true scary story. So I suggest you turn off all the lights and you cozy up to your computer, your iPhone, tablet, whatever, and get ready to get a little spooked. Here we go. So as you know, I am a medium. So every day I see and experience a lot of things. And for me, it's become very normal. And it's really not until I talk to other people that aren't used to speaking to um, the deceased or to... Um, things of other dimensions, it's not until I look at their face that I realize, oh, that might not be totally normal for everyone. Huh. They look a little freaked out, which is understandable. Me, it's become the norm. Now, as I've raised my vibration, I, I don't experience a lot on the lower planes. Um, when I first was experiencing my gifts, you see all kinds of stuff. I won't get into it in this video, but it can be a little unnerving. As you get accustomed to what you're doing and you raise your energy, your vibration, and protect yourself, you tend to only see things that are on the higher planes, which are a little lighter. Literally, light. Well, anyway, this story goes back to before I knew that I was a medium. As any of my friends can tell you, the friends I've had all the way when we uh, through being a young child is that if we went to some place spooky or we went to some place that was really haunted I was going to be the one experiencing the haunting and uh, now I know why that is but at the time I didn't it was just oh of course Ryan saw the ghost or Ryan felt this or experienced this it just became common that if anything was going to happen it was going to happen to me so years ago I was 21 which was many years ago at this point. <clears throat> and I had, uh, I was living in Pennsylvania, which is my hometown or my home state. And I had decided to go visit a friend living in Wisconsin. This friend and his group of friends decided we were going to go camping in the upper peninsula of Michigan. For those who have, that have never been there, it's very beautiful. Um, but I would say a lot of it's very almost deserted. It's it's lots of woods and um, beautiful Native American reservations and the lakes are all surrounding it, but you can easily drive for hours and only see trees, which can be a little unnerving. It's very quiet and um, you're always afraid you're going to run out of gas. And this is also before people had cell phones. And really, to this day, I don't even think there's cell phone service where we were at. So if you're stranded or lost, you were screwed. So that in itself was a little creepy on the drive. But like I said, it is beautiful. And there's a bunch of us young people with a few cases of beer. We're going to go camping for a few days. So anyway, we get to the town we were staying in, which was literally like one gas station in a bunch of woods. And we finally go to uh, the cabin we're staying at, which is about, I think, a half a mile off the road. So we, we get down to the cabin, and the cabin's very nice. It's updated. It doesn't look to be too old. It's right next to a... Uh, a creek. I want to say creek. I'm from Pennsylvania, but creek, as most people would say. And um, it was really nice, not, you know, creepy at all. And um, as we pull up, we start unloading all our hiking gear and our beer and our food and start um, making home in this one room cabin. We noticed that on the picnic tables in front of the cabin were these little stick figures that um, someone had made. And for those of you that have watched the um, Blair Witch Project years ago, that I think that movie had come out soon around this time. And that is exactly what these looked like. It looked like a bunch of young kids had been there and made these little scary stick figures just like in the movie. So we kind of tossed them to the side and didn't worry about it. No more, I don't know if we were there an hour, 
and a car had driven up our driveway and we were the only thing at the end of this driveway so there'd really be no reason to be someone to be driving up it the car was a large station wagon and it was full of um it looked to me like a family there was a lot like too many people were packed into this um, vehicle. And I would say they looked Native American. And we waved and smiled. We didn't know if someone was lost or if they were coming to greet us. Um, but they, they started circling the cabin and they did this a few times and they just stared at us. And it was very unnerving and, and we didn't know what was happening or if we had upset someone or if we were at the wrong place. Eventually, this family left. Um, and like I said, they had circled us a few times and never stopped, never said one word. So that was creepy, to say the least. <clears throat> well, the next few days go on completely normal. You know, we have beer at night around the campfire. We are hiking during the day and cooking. And it's, it's beautiful, it's relaxing, and pretty uneventful. And um, in the... In the, I would say it was the third night, in the one room cabin, there was three sets of bunk beds and each of us were in a bunk bed. One of the bunk beds had two people in it, so that would make seven people. And then on the floor next to me was a good friend of mine, so that was the eighth person. And she was sleeping in a sleeping bag on the floor, which she preferred. Next to her was uh, the kitchen table. I awake. I think it was on the third night, I wake to hear noises outside. And um, these noises sound like like things, animals or people walking around the cabin. And um, I thought, oh, maybe those people are back or that family's back. And I was I was very scared. I was very nervous because I thought, did they come back to kill us? Are we on their property? You know, all these things were going through my mind and I, I was sort of listening and debating on when to wake uh, the others up. All of a sudden I hear what sounds like screaming, but it almost sounded like animals screaming. It was an odd uh, noise that I'll never forget and yet I've never heard before. I could not make out if it was human or if it was animal. And when I would think it was one thing, it sounded like many. When I would think it was far away, then all of a sudden it would sound very close. And at the same time, something or some things are circling the cabin and it, and it seems like they're almost sliding along the cabin. It was really unnerving. About the time I'm really like, okay, I, I think I gotta wake someone up. I hear my friend next to me on the floor who was also awake and was hearing this. And she, she said, do you hear that? And I said, I do. And she said, I'm so scared. And I said, so am I. And she said, can I crawl in bed with you? And I said, yes. So she crawled in bed and we sat there listening to this, these, these noises go on for what seemed like all night. And um, many people at this point are wondering why we didn't wake anyone up. What I can say is that we were so scared that we were frozen. And I, I think we were really afraid if we did wake anyone up, what would happen? These noises go on, like I said, for what seemed like eternity. Horrific animal screaming noises. And then I don't know if they stopped or I fell asleep. I don't know which one happened first, but the next thing I knew it was morning and we woke up. That morning, everyone wondered why my friend and I had crawled in bed together and they were kind of picking on us and we said that we had heard noises and, you know, we were staying with, most of them were guys and they were just picking on us and, you know, saying we were being dramatic and it was probably a bobcat. You know, we really knew better. We were quite freaked out. Anyway, the day continue, continued as normal and I believe as the day went on, we really did talk ourselves out of these noises we heard. You know, maybe they were animals and maybe animals were sort of smelling around the cabin. So the next night, we drank our beer and we're having fun and laughing outside and doing our thing. And we all go to sleep. 
And I just remember thinking, I sure as shit hope I don't hear any of those uh, noises again. <clears throat> so I fall asleep. I wake up in the middle of the night and I remember it was very, very bright in the cabin. And um, in the middle of the cabin was a wood stove and the wood stove was burning so hot and so bright with a flame that it had just lit up the entire cabin, which I didn't think much of. And I sat up and I wondered why I was awake and I didn't hear any noises outside, which was great. And um, I sort of looked around and everyone was sleeping. And the table that was next to me, I would say maybe three, three feet away, four feet, just enough that uh, my friend could be on the floor and then right there was the kitchen table. Um, I looked and someone was sitting at the kitchen table with very long hair and um, they had their back up against the wall because the kitchen table was, um, it didn't have chairs, it was long, um, like, like in a booth. Um, like sort of like a picnic table looking uh, kitchen table and um, they were sitting there and I couldn't really make out who it was because the fire was on the other side of them so the light was hidden hitting them this way and making them look dark like a shadow to me I didn't think much of it I actually thought it was my friend because she had that long hair like down to her waist and I looked and I started, I called her name out and I wondered what she was doing and she didn't respond to me. And she was sitting there and chewing on her fingernails and she even had like a beanie cap on and legs spread out. Um, and and I, I couldn't get her to respond to me and I, I still wasn't really freaked out. I, I just thought, why isn't she answering? And then I started looking around and I counted everyone in their beds and and everyone was in their bed no one was out of their bed and I I thought well it must be her because she was sleeping on the floor and at this point I lean in very closely like like this closely I'm like leaning out of my bunk leaning over probably a foot and a half from from who I thought my friend was and I called her name out and I'm like, why are you not answering me? What are you doing? And about that time I hear, Ryan, what are you doing? And I stop and I look down and I realize as I'm leaning over talking to my friend that that's not her. She's on the floor still in her sleeping bag. And she says, Ryan, what are you doing? I'm in my sleeping bag. And I look at her and I look back up at this person who would have been the ninth person even though there's only eight of us and they are as clear as I am to you right now and solid even though I couldn't make out any features I threw myself back and I threw myself to the wall threw the blankets over me like a child <laughs> and I covered myself up and I faced the wall the entire night. I had to pee so bad that I actually considered just peeing in my sleeping bag. I didn't do it, but that's how bad I had to pee and that's how nervous I was. My heart was literally hitting my chest and it's all I could hear in my ear. I was so petrified to turn back and look at what this thing was or it was just, it was awful. It was the scariest feeling. And you know, when you're young and you're unsure of things and, and you get older, you can look back and be like, oh, well, I was a kid. Maybe that didn't happen. Maybe it was my imagination. But when you're 21 at the time, you're not imagining anything. And God knows I didn't have that much fear. So I laid and I faced that wall all night. I never slept after that. As the sun started coming up and coming in the windows, I got the nerve finally to turn and look at the kitchen table and there was nothing there. I looked around the cabin, everyone's in their bunks, my friend's on the floor, doors are locked, nothing. And I just couldn't believe it. 
unlike the night before when my friend had actually heard the noises I was hearing, this time there was no one else that saw or experienced what I did, and I was scared to death. As that day went on, I thought, how am I going to tell them this? They're going to think I'm nuts. And my friend didn't seem to remember me uh, talking to her or what I thought was her in the middle of the night. So I was just walking around with like, we had two more nights to go in this cabin. And I thought, I don't want to be here. I want to go. Something is wrong. I said to my friend that had taken us to the cabin that, you know, something had woke me up in the middle of the night. And I, I woke up because it was so bright in the the cabin. The whole thing was lit up like Fort Knox. And when I told him that, he said, well, that's impossible. He said, the fire burned out in the middle of the night in the wood stove. And I said, no, no, it, it didn't. At some point, it was burning really bright, and I could see the whole cabin lit up. And he was like, not possible. He said, it totally burned out in the middle of the night. There was no flames in it. And that's why in the morning we had woke up and it was really cold. Well, now I was just royally freaked out altogether. So needless to say, no one would let me leave and I couldn't really explain what had happened. We eventually made it through the other two nights. Nothing did happen. Um, there was one of those books in the cabin that um, you write in when you stay. And I had been flipping through and I, I did see one story about someone saying that they thought the cabin was haunted and that things had moved from one place to another when they were there. And the kid that wrote it though was young and I thought, well, even though I believed him, I thought if I tell people this, they'll be like, oh, well, it was a kid that wrote it, of course. Like I said, the other two nights were uneventful. We left and went back. But this stuck with me. I, you know, I always wondered what had happened, and I was 100% sure of what I had seen. Flash forward to years later, I find out I'm a medium, and this is why I see things, and I have a very trusted psychic medium helping me. And I brought up this situation. I didn't go into the whole story, but I basically asked about this figure, this person that I had seen in the cabin. And here, this figure that I had been so scared of and petrified um, of what it was or who it was, she she said to me, you know, this this dark figure, figure like a shadow figure, which makes sense why it looked like a shadow, um, was actually in there protecting us. And I thought that was sort of amazing that this thing I was so afraid of um, was here to make sure we were okay. And then the unnerving part was that she said, he was in there protecting you, the shadow figure, because he was protecting you from the creatures outside. Well, the funny part about that is, I didn't tell her the story about the creatures or the noises we heard outside. So I felt shit. And she said there was animal noises, and she said that they weren't animals. Um, she felt they were from like a different dimension. And he also was, and he was, as I said, protecting us um, from them. Uh, she later said she's not sure what would have happened if we would have went outside or if I would have went outside, but she does feel it wouldn't have been good. So that's my story. <laughs> and, you know, I it's one that still has stuck with me, even though I have a little more clarity on it. Out of all the things that have happened to me and out of all the things that I see, like I said, sometimes on a daily basis, and even all the other hauntings I've experienced, that was the one that was really the most unnerving to me, and yet also the sweetest. You know, I, I thought, here's this person or entity from another place that came to keep us safe, which is to me loving and magical and, and opened me up to the possibilities that there's just so much that goes on that we're just completely unaware of. Even me doing this um, for a living, I don't even think... Uh, I touch base on on what exists and what's out there, which is fascinating. 
um, but I still don't have a clear understanding of what was outside. Now I understand the purpose of the the shadow figure inside, but I don't know what I was hearing outside, and I've really not never got a clear explanation on that. So anyway, if any light workers watch this that do know what was going on outside, um, get a hold of me or email me. I would love to know if if you can pick up on what it was or explain further than what I know. And you know, too, I look back and that. Um, the Native American family that had came to where we were at and was circling us. I almost wonder now if they were warning us. I think that maybe they knew something or knew something that was in the woods. Um, I really don't know, but I do wonder if that's what they were doing. So anyway, I'm glad that our angels and guides and whatever sh shadow figure was there that night was protecting us. So that's my Halloween story for you. Much love.